And good Friday morning. Stan Stevens along with you here and State Representative Ron Copeland. Good to have you here, Ron. Thank you, Stan. Glad to be here. <laughs> it's always, always, be back a home. always a pleasure to have you in town and able to uh, talk a little bit about what's going on in Jefferson City and keep our listeners and our watchers and people informed about uh, different things going on. We really do appreciate that. Uh, a lot of times people hear things. It's good to get it right from the source, I always say, get that, that first-hand things. And a lot of different things going on in Jeff City. We talked about some bills last time that uh, you were sponsors of, so we may want to touch a little bit on that. First off, welcome, and thanks for being here. Well, I appreciate being here. You know, one of the main things that I am trying to do as your state representative is keep you informed. I think sometimes politicians like to keep you in the dark so they can do things that you don't know. I'm always available. I mean, I'm, my email is always available. My Facebook page, I've got phone numbers. I take phone calls all the time. And I mean, if you hear something that you have questions about, call my office, call my cell phone if you got it. Go get on Facebook. I answer them messages as well. I just feel that you need to know what's going on. I'm just as frustrated sometimes as you are. And I just want to keep the accurate information so you know. Um, what's going on because sometimes you hear part of the story and there's a backstory to it and um, rumors get spread and I just want the truth to be out there and um, I'm like I kind of said I'm not a politician <laughs> you know people say yes I am a politician because I got elected but uh, what I've learned a lot being in Jeff City for the last two and a half years is that um, politicians tell you what you want to hear and, and do what they want um, I've come home several times and told my bride Denise that uh, I probably lost some votes because I can't tell somebody something that they want to hear um, to get their vote I mean that, that's what it struggles and, I, and we kind of do that as a as people we want our politicians to do what we want and mm -hmm. if they don't do what we want we won't vote for them so the politicians getting this little spew of saying well, I'm gonna tell you what you want to hear you know for example I had a lady a month ago come in and there was there was one ninety thousand dollars to be paid at the state to pay them but there was no other position in the county this is every county would be th this way no other position in the county made ninety thousand dollars and I uh, my, my question to her was well why do you deserve 90 when everybody else is making 40 or 50 or 30 and I says I I'm not opposed to a raise but I know I probably lost her vote because I didn't say I'm gonna vote for ninety thousand yeah. dollars I'm here for you as a public and you know that's that's one of the things that I struggle with. I want to be here for you, um, but and this program here is basically, and I like this, so I can give you the information. So sure, so well, we do appreciate it. And a lot of times, you know, people don't understand that there's a lot of things that you, you see the surface, you oh, know, yeah. and there's so much that is underneath there and layers too. It's not just like one or two things. There may be a number of layers that are involved that. You know, you can't really go in. People don't understand, or you can't even go into detail because you aren't even sure where it even ends right there. It may go further than that. Well, exactly. And I, I, do, I use an analogy, and most people can kind of understand this, is most people that call me are playing a checker game. Well, when I get to Jeff City, it's a chess game. There's so many pieces <laughs> that you're dealing with. You're dealing with the governor. You're dealing with this person. You're dealing with this person. You're dealing with this person. And you all the, I'm getting all the information in five different people or five different a avenues, and right. you're getting information from one source, you know, so usually when somebody calls me, we talk about it, usually by the end of the conversations, it's not, they understand where I'm at, you know, so I try to give them all the information, and that is what this program's for, is why I'm here, why I did this, and have a question how I voted, you know, I have no problem answering that, and um, I think that's what people want to hear. Very good. All right, well, let's just start out and let's talk a little bit about some of the bills that are going on. You have uh, some different things here about the state parks and also some capital improvement uh, to state facilities. I mean, yeah. these are these are house bills, so yeah, let's talk yeah. a little bit about them. Well, right now, we're, this is the time we're going through the budget process, and there's anywhere from 1 to 20, House Bill 1 to 20 is usually the, the monetary issues that are the budget pays for. So, yeah, we went through that. We had a supplemental earlier on in session, and that's where we give uh, the governor requested certain things early mm -hmm. on to give state employees a, a raise. Right. So they're getting that raise, right? We approved that. That was early on in session, so we get state employees a, 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 right. a, a decent raise, you know. Um, 
So now we're going through the prop budget process, and that has to be done by the end of session. Right. You know, these are the processes. We voted them out of the House, and now they're going to the Senate. The Senate's doing their version, putting their in, and then we'll discuss that. But, yeah, there's several, you know, House Bill 17, 18, 19, and 20 are the ones we talked, we kind of went through this year, this this week. Mm -hmm. And some of what's set House Bill 17. Um, it goes over state parks and, and what money's being put in that and goes through and says where it's going. I know Current River State Park's getting some. That's in Shannon County. Right. Uh, Echo Bluff's getting some, you know, and Roaring River. I looked look through the process there yesterday and the day before to see who's getting that. You know, I am currently still working on a process to hopefully get Montauk some funding that was not put in the budget. Uh, but it is a process. You know, I'm going to continue to request that with the senator and, and the commissioners here locally also are on board with that. You know, they're improving coming in the back way to Montauk, you know, right. so that's an asset that they're working on. I think West Mowbray got a grant for got that, a flap grant, right. you know, so that I, I give them, I commend them for being able to do that and working for that project. And they're working with me with the DNR to get that done, you know, so uh, it is a process, you know, nothing happens overnight up there. But that was states and parks. Um, House Bill 18 um, is capital improvements over state agency build buildings like the Capitol and all the state buildings throughout the state. You know, there's that's an upkeep. We need to make sure we maintain them buildings. Um, uh, House Bill 19 is ca is critical capital improvements throughout the state, and uh, this is um, one of the bills where you get to request uh, uh, funding for things capital improvements in your district and you know this is um being up there first this is the third year i second well, let's see i guess it's going on the third year third i've been year. up there um and it's a process and you have to go ask the budget chair you have to ask the senators and you have to find out if you can get the support and um i was able to um get in in uh some an item in the budget this year for the first time, which I'm, I'm, I feel blessed, you know. Mm -hmm. But in my my th process is that you hear these other eight representatives getting twenty million, thirty million, two hundred million, and uh, I'm just wondering why, you know, it doesn't come here. So, you know, them are the things that I'm working on. But on on the capital improvements bill, you know, there's a lot of health agencies in our district. Um, right. I've been meeting with the, you know, the, there's five different health agencies in our in our district that provide us essential services for this thing and uh, the hospital came to me and, and what caught me about the hospital they were looking for grant money right they were just right. asking me how can we have grant money well talking to senator brown and some other senators if they asked said why can't we ask for that in the capital improvement budget and that's kind of free money without a grant process which i as a rep can ask for so through the process um i kind of looked at the need and what the county would need and what, what I felt was important and what I felt people in the community was important. And I feel the hospital is one of our mo most important health agencies in the, in, in the district, not putting anything apart from everything else. You know, with the other health departments here in, in Dent County do a phenomenal job, but I feel sometimes we look at the nice, shite, not a nice new shite, shiny, shiny bright, new, nickel, bright yeah. <laughs> new nickel and think we go for that. You know, I, I use an example is, you know, you know, churches do a new, nice, nice new auditorium, new sanctuary, and they got a roof, roofy leak because it's nice and shiny. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and we need to, I, I'm a kind of old school, I guess. I'm thinking I love the nice and shiny new nickel, but our hospital has been here in this, in this community providing services for the community and I feel that should be the first need that I'm looking at. We don't want to, and they provide services that other, other health agencies do not, right. you know, they got an emergency room, they've got ambulance, which in ambulance, they so, lose money on that. Yeah, right. Inpatient you know, services. And, and the inpatient services, they got long-term health care. Um, they provide a service that we definitely do not need. And as everybody knows, there was a little bump in the road with the Salem hospital in the mm -hmm. past few years. You know, I've been watching that, um, talking to the board when they if they need something and whatnot and, and I feel these capital improvements which is like the roof and uh, some sewer issues and some major capital improvements um, they're doing very well I think with the medical issues that they have to provide right but I felt that you know this million dollars that I'm requesting in the budget from the state to go to the for the capital improvements would be a outstanding investment for the community to keep our hospital running and provide a service for the other um, health 
departments in the area. So, I mean, that's where that comes from. Uh, I want to support all the other health agencies here, you know, um, going forward. You know, uh, there's other requests that I'm going to push for, you know, in the future to, to help that out, them, them, them out. But I think at this point in time, you know, they asked me what I wanted or what, what they thought was the most important. I also, um, there's other requests, and I requested that them be put in budget as well. I did not not ask for them things. I mean, I think there's rumor out there saying I didn't support other issues, but I did support them. I, they just asked me which which one was my priority. Right. And I felt the hospital, nobody know in the community, we don't need to lose our hospital. No. You know? No. I mean, no. so I, that, I just want to put that out there, let everybody know I support our health agencies here because it, it provides a service that we really need to keep here. You know, one of the things, Ron, and um, you were, had an opportunity to actually sit on, on the Denton County Health Department's uh, board meeting, which, you know, I don't think, I don't even know when the last time a state representative actually sat in on one of their board meetings, and you've done that with other agencies as well, getting a firsthand knowledge of what actually is going on and because you really don't understand what's going on day by day operations, you really need to know what's find out in the guts of the the problem. And the only way you're going to find out the guts of the problem is going to board meetings and hearing everything. And and I th I commend you for doing that because you're not going to get a firsthand experience by not doing it firsthand. Well, and I, and like I'll give Jason Smith kudos for that. You know, he told me that you know legislation part is this, but getting out and seeing what's in your community is a vital need to know what we need, right? So, I mean, I've, I've visited the treatment center here locally because they mm -hmm. reopened. I've visited Four Rivers. I've, you know, I've visited Denton County Health Center. Uh, and I've learned each time I go to them the, what they provide to our community, right? Sure. I mean, I was, I'll be honest with you, I was uh, very naive about what our Dent County Health Department provided for our community. I mean, I was really lacking in that information but you got to remember i was a trooper for 28 sure. years if you want to know about the law i can tell you <laughs> you know you know I, I was thinking about this the other day i i get 120 emails every day by the time i get back monday if i don't check my emails i'll have 200 250 sure. emails about how to vote and this is an issue this is a concern this is a grant information that gets out there so um trying to broaden that information is is overwhelming but uh uh, my problem is I'm all in and I can't rest. And so it's just, it's one of those things. But but to learn every day what is needed, like you said, you, you were never exposed to that as a trooper. So, you know, when you had a chance to go out and visit at the hospital and see what their needs were, and you got a chance to talk to different people and you met different departments, that's how you find out what is actually needed and you can see for yourself what's going on. You're not being told something and you're sitting in Jeff City and somebody says, hey, we need this or we need that. You actually have an opportunity to sit there, see it for yourself, and get the we'll catch say get the background information on how long it's been. You know, our hospital's been here since the sixties. So, you know, different things start to wear out after a while. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's like we all wear out after a while from the sixties. I get it. Uh, you know, one of the things that you were able to do though is actually hear the whole story of this is where we are. This is what we're doing, you know. And you heard the same thing at, at the Den County Health Department. You got a chance to hear their board, and actually saw some history about different things that they had from original minutes from years back in the '60s. So, you know, you you see how long these things have been around, and you just have to, you have to be amazed that they get by on whatever they have to do to get by. And a lot of times, it's with the assistance of our state representatives and state senators. It's just great. But sometimes it's just local programs that they provide that you may not have any knowledge of. And I agree with that. And and what what we what we forget, you know, we all bash on lobbyists about this and that. Usually, lobbyists are paid people or or consultants go up and lobby for the need, right? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, you know, we have organizations like the health department and the hospital, they just go out and work every day, work really hard for what they do, but they don't get involved in the political process, right? Right. And after the this this is my going on my third year, I've realized that may be my job as a representative to reach out to kind of figure out what the need is for these organizations that work hard that don't come and lobby us. I, I, I mean, uh, the... There's all kinds of lobbyists for every organization out there, and they pay that person to come up and, 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 and tell me what's going on. You know, uh, and I take their information, um, and then I go to the other side and get the other side information. You know, I got an email this week that says, hey, you're going to add this amendment about a school, some, some school stuff, right? And I'm thinking, no, I'm not, right? <laughs> so I says, no, I'm not. You know, here's what I, I mean. What I was going to do is I want to put the – I got one side of the story, 
And I'm working on the other side of the story to get the other part to see where the middle ground would be because there is an issue with what what, what we're talking about, the right. amendment that I need to add. But it I want consistency, and I want to figure out what both sides would kind of agree on on a consistency basis instead of this one gets this or this one gets it. This one wants all of it, right? And this sure. one wants the other side. Sure. So it's like, um, so that's how rumors get going. And I say, no, that's not true. I'm working on consistency issue so everybody knows what's going on because it's an issue um that they can charge this this, this place they can charge this this place things so there's different ways they right. can charge something so and it is an issue that needs to be addressed but um but then with how things go and that's why you know i've met with school the superintendents k-8s i've met with uh, here locally um with superintendents here on occasion you know i talk to the school board people whenever i have an issue i mean how do i know what's true and what's not because everybody has their own story you know sure. what do they say you know you hear this story here's story and there's so the truth is somewhere in somewhere the middle, in the middle you yeah. know so that's where we're at on that yeah. so but I, you know i want to support what's best for the community i don't get personally involved uh, i try to make the best decision for the whole you know we can go out for an example you know open enrollment's a big deal you yep. know I personally don't have a problem with open enrollment, um, but I look at my district and what will it do to the school districts? You know, our schools sure. are, have to provide education to all students, no matter what, you know, or what level, what, what, what capabilities they have. And uh, if we start open enrollment, will that affect the schools that, that have, have to take care of everybody? You know, and there's, there's a lot of issues that get into that, but I, I personally don't have a problem with that. But I don't vote that way because I think our school districts here might be negatively affected by that. So that's how I I want to vote. How the, I want to represent sure. instead of my own personal issue on that. Well, and and, and I'm not going to go off on this too much because sure. I, I don't have all the details that you do. I'm sure when the, on the open enrollment. But when I hear the ad that I hear and I hear it on the radio, it's the three districts that got declassified and decertified that have open enrollment, Normandy, St. Louis, Kansas City. All of them at one time did not pass their MSIPs. Therefore, they allowed open enrollment. Now, now they have since all gotten better, but once the open enrollment was allowed, it's been well, allowed. Well, well, I agree with that. I mean, there's some... There, you look at the inner inner cities and urban and rural areas, I think in the urban or rural areas do a f phenomenal job compared to the inner cities because I know teachers that that taught up there and they say, I wouldn't send my kids here mm -hmm. because of the, this, and we'll get wrecked. This personal thing is I think sure. it's discipline. You get kicked out at R80, you get kicked out at R80. I mean, there's no, nothing. So there's some, we get into that. So sure. there, there is some benefits. I just don't want to. You know, three percent of the people is going to use open enrollment for the. Will it affect the other ninety-seven percent? But you know how it would affect everybody tax-wise. You know, the districts would be hurt tax-wise if they lose people. Yeah. Well, and 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 if you really, we can get into the weeds on that. Is if if R eighty would have open enrollment and they would take a student from R three, mm -hmm. the way I understand it, you know, R three gets to keep their local tax base on that student, right? So R eighty is taking that kid, and they're getting the state proportion but then the local people have to pay the extra for that extra student to be there right i mean so i mean there's a lot of more into it than just an open enrollment bill yeah. and it, it's like i said a chess game <laughs> how many pieces are moving in that one bill is it's not just i get to go to the no, school it's just not as clear cut as they make it sound and, and you know you get into that same thing you know i was in committee yesterday before i come home you know we had a bill and they added eight bills to the one bill, mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah. in committee. Yeah, I'm thinking, it, it, so you have to sit down and, and, and go through that every each one of them before I, you vote and go through that, you know, so. Yeah, that ha that happens quite a bit in Jeff City. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the public transportation house bill that's, that's been out there, that's been talking about that. Well, uh, you know, we all, we all know the MRPC has been trying to work with public transportation here in this area. It's very difficult. Yeah. So what what is the House bill trying to do here? Well, the, the, I think the, the House, I know that, that there's not a House bill for that. I think some oh, budget okay. area items. The House bill we're talking about that I had written down was uh, House Bill 282, and it's a public transit oh, okay. um, transportation thing on the Second Amendment. They're going to allow the you to carry on public transit, you know, to, for your Second Amendment rights. You know, so that was just another little thing that, you know, for Second Amendment, you know, if I, I can't carry it from here to here, 
you know, and, you know, there's both sides of that. Should we allow people to carry a gun on public transit, you know? So that did go through the house. There's also something about churches, you know, not without, right now there's limitations on who can carry in a church and whatnot like that. There still has that ability to deny that with certain criteria, but so it's not a free for all. It's just something else that, that was talked about. Okay. So being able to, to carry on buses. Yes. They're Amtrak, trying, things yeah. of that nature. Okay. Well, Amtrak would be probably, a, that's a one exemption. I think there's a federal issue with that. Okay. So they exempt an Amtrak, but you were talking about St. Louis transit, maybe Kansas City transit bus type things. Okay. Very good. All right. Catalytic converter. Oh, yeah. Don Mayhew. Sen okay. Representative Don, Don Mayhew. Good old Don. All right. Good old Don Mayhew. Tell, to tell us a little bit about that. Well, yeah, he's, he's, he's very adamant about this. Well, you know, the, the numbers that came out about it, Catalytic converters being stolen in Missouri mm -hmm. is astronomical. It is. And, you know, all they're trying to do on this bill is the purchaser has, is being, having some responsibility. If I bring you 150 catalytic converters, you you know you as the purchasers hold on here. You know, we gotta we gotta think about this. Where'd you get 150 catalytic converters? You know, and, and you have a 1976 pickup truck. You know, I'm not being. I'm, I guess I'm stereotyping yeah, yeah, the profile sure. a little bit. I shouldn't do that. But you know, it just says the purchaser if they you know if you're bringing in 10 catalytic converters every week. The, the pur purchaser should realize maybe there's something up with this because how many legally catalytic converters can you get? You know, some of them catalytic converters, I think, can be five $600. Or well, more than that. You know, you know, so, you know, but this bill is trying to limit it to where, you know, you have to provide ownership type things or what vehicle came off and, and things like that. So it's just trying to reduce the, the people that buy it, not to keep them from buying it, but just if I have no place to sell it, I can't steal it and take it off and sell it. That that and I think that I don't think it's hit Salem too awful bad, but um, you know some other places it hits pretty bad. Well, and you do realize catalytic converters are not required in Salem in the area because we don't have sniff tests on our. Yeah. You know yeah, that's yeah, only in St. Louis and Kansas City, Columbia and, and Springfield are I know the only ones that I know of that actually in your inspection that you actually have yes. to get a sniff test so if you don't have a catalytic converter in dan county it's you're okay to even get an inspection it doesn't make any difference of course they normally do tell you your catalytic converter is going bad or whatever uh i had to get one replaced on a vehicle it was 700 some odd dollars yeah. so they're not cheap absolutely and uh, yeah they get they get stolen quite a bit there's some House bills on public safety. I yeah, think. there's a, some big house bills on public safety. We can okay. go, this is going to be hours of talking on that, but there are some public safety bills. Or they address some issues in St. Louis. Uh, the the, the uh, prosecutor up there, some issues they're having up there. Oh, yeah. The St. Uh, St. Louis Police Department coming out of the control hands of the uh, alderman and mayor to try to take some political stuff out of that. There's some bail reform stuff. Um, there's a lot of stuff involved in uh in, in the, in the uh, um, public safety bill that goes on and on and on. And that's in House Bill 1108 is one. There's some Senate bills as well. I mean, if you wanted to, I mean, on my on my Facebook page, you can go to, and, and or my Capitol Report, I put that in weekly, and you can go to them bills if, on the house.mo.gov page and, and look at more in, involved in them if you're interested in the public safety issues. There's a lot of stuff. Yes, yeah, there, there very is. I mean, yeah, a lot. A lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff going down. Now, on the federal side, we're all hearing about this, and you're hearing about it on Sports Center, and you're hearing about it on, on AP News, and everywhere else, and in virtually every paper you see, is, is the transgender situation with sports, and also other transgender situations that are coming up about children and making the decisions. Where is the state working on that, on the Transgender well, Act? I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. Right yeah, on, on there is. Right there's now. a lot. There's House Bill 419 and House Bill 183 actually passed out of the House and was sent to the Senate. Okay. And basically, um, the, the transgender um, hormone treatment and uh, the actual surgeries, um, basically all that bill does says is, is that you can't make that decision until you're 18. I mean, I think that... Uh, um, you know, you got both sides that are very adamant about this, but there's testimony where people come in, kids come in that got transgendered when they're 12 and 13, and now they're 20 and they regret doing that surgery, but they really didn't have that effect ability to make that decision. Mm -hmm. You know, we we don't allow people to make decisions. They're not adults till they're 18, right? Right. I mean, so 
um, and I sat on one of those committees and I listened to the testimony. Um, and, uh, you know, there was a father there that I was heartfelt for. I mean, cause he, he seemed like a father like me and he was going through this, that his child thought they were a uh, sex that they weren't. I mean, he, he, it, it, it really tugged at my heart because I don't know what I would do if that happened. Right. Mm -hmm. But I definitely wouldn't allow that, allow it to happen until they're 18 to make that decision. Right. We also had in that same committee, we had a, a parent uh, and a husband and wife come up and said their 21-year-old son come and told them they, they, they thought they were a girl. I mean, that really took back from me because do, does a 21-month-old really even know what a sex mm. is? Yeah. I mean, so I mean, so is that is it a push from a parent that thinks that, you know, and, and not allowed? But I think this transgender bill that we passed out of the House, and there's one come from the Senate, um, similar bill that would just say you can't do it till you're 18. Now that doesn't keep a doctor from giving medicine if you're having thought process. You know, the, the, if if they're going through a hormone issues and your hormones are crazy and you feel like you're a boy or a girl, I think you can be treated with that until you're 18, and, and because they claim suicide is a big rate, and we don't want a kid to commit suicide if they're feeling that way, right? Sure. So, but do you have to transition and and take mutilation parts and, and change everything in your body when you're going through that process? So I, I think there's a period that when you're 18, I, I I still don't understand that, why you would want to do that. But if you're 18 and you make that decision, you're an adult, right? So that's what that one is. And House Bill 183 is basically to protect girls from boys playing sports. I mean, I... It, I don't know why there's any controversy on this in a roundabout way because it's not, you know. Well, I think that the controversy is, and, and I'm just, I was trying to listen to this a little bit last night, I caught a little bit of it, is not all sports should be worried about it. And I said, okay, and I'm thinking about, it, all right, swimming, yes, obviously football, soccer, something of that nature where the physical attributes could be a lot different. But if, if I'm participating in chess or checkers like you're talking about, what difference does it make if I'm a girl? Well, or I agree boy, with that. Part. You know? I agree with that. Part. So, but it was it was all encompassing. It was either all one way or all the other, and I think that's where some of the controversy is coming into. Because the House bill passed in uh, in the U.S. legislature yes. had it all or nothing. It was no in between. See, you can, if you were a, a boy and you got transgendered into a girl, you cannot participate in women's sports. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I th I think we need to just be reasonable about this, but it's just like. It's all or nothing, and that, that, that's, yeah. that, that, I think that's what causes the issues, parts of the issue. Now, I know the House bill also allows up to a certain age playing physical sports. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, up to sixth grade, fifth, sixth grade, you know, the, the physical attributes don't kick in and hormones. No. So, so it's not like you can't play basketball at that age with a girl and a boy. No. I mean, but I, I, the confusion to me is, you know, and, and uh, this is my personal that's belief, but... Just because you identify as something doesn't make you that per that kind of person. And I'm not being mean. I mean, um, somebody says I identify as handsome and, and good looking, right? <laughs> so you have to say that about me. And that's not, you know, just because you identify, I, I don't have to agree. I don't have to agree with that. You can you can be that way. I, I don't care, but I don't have to. Right. I, so, but, I, I think I heard somewhere the other day, and it says, well, so you can be Captain America if you want to be. Well, I mean, I mean it's it, up to you how you want to dress and how you want to look. You can do whatever you want to do. I just don't know how we got here. I mean, it's, it's if, if if they want to do that, let them do that. Mm -hmm. But why do you have to make me play your game? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I get care. what you're saying. And you, I agree you, with that. You can do that. I mean, if you want to wear a pink shirt, I, I don't care. But why do you say... I have to accept that pink, I have to wear a pink shirt too and agree with that. No, I mean, so. no. I, I, and that's but, what I said. That, that, you that's know, the individuality, they don't realize there's individuality on both sides. You know, hey, if I'm if there's a macho guy and a guy that's not so macho, you know, he, they both have to understand that they're different. So, On a golf course, just, we different. have a, a women's tee-off box, a male, uh, you know, we have that for a reason. Yeah. I mean, they, they've proven that that is what... The, to make it fair, right? Mm -hmm. So they put them up farther, right? Sure. It's because they don't have the strength. So we, we that that just makes sense. I don't know why we're trying to change what makes sense. Something, but yeah. we can move on to that. But we, I think, we do need to protect women's sports. W girls or females that work hard 
cannot compete a male and that's being proven that these ladies are losing the swimming for example you know and the other wrestling and MMA boxers and stuff like that are transitioning it's proven that there's a few of them that are moderate or medium level athletes as a male mm -hmm. and they excel in the female field and I, I think I'm starting to see more women now step up and say we don't believe in this and that's what it's going to take i think the women are going to say this is not right you know they go through a process and they're just going to say this ain't right for us and we as the state legislator need to say no you're not going to compete against my daughter that's competing for a scholarship you know or even going but i think we're stepping up and doing the right thing hopefully this will get through the house through the senate and see what the governor does on it so I don't think it's solved by any way, shape, or form. No, there's always going to be two sides, but, you know, it's it's really, if they really sit down and think about it, they know, I think they really know that it's not fair. All right. SB 51. Physical therapy bill, basically, you know, it, it, it alleviates you having to go to a doctor to get prescribed to go to a physical therapist. If you have certain criteria and meeting so much years of service and you get so many visits and if it's not fixed, they have to refer them to a doctor. So it doesn't take all the re restrictions off of it. Okay. It just takes that initial thing is if you know you, you're going you're going to need a physical therapist, you don't have to go pay a doctor bill and him refer you, you know. You know, most of the time I would go to my doctor anyway sure. to get the referral. I mean, so it just it just kind of alleviates, especially with our shortage of pharma or doctors and nurse practitioners in some of these rural areas. You might have a physical therapist that you can go to to take care of some of them needs. It was just a basic, and that's been in the house several years to try to fix. Do you see it passing? You know, it might it may pass, especially with the, the way the atmosphere is and is as far as doctors in these rural areas trying to keep them there and provide a service mm -hmm. that, that's not that's needed that you can't have a doctor in that area or whatnot so let's talk a little bit about the historic tax credit oh yeah there's a tax credit out there that came in i can't know the exact amount that's house bill um 316 it provides a tax credit for people who want to you know if you're redoing the say the um, court courthouse is a historic building like they're doing right now yeah you know if you wanted to donate fifty thousand of that it would give you a, a tax credit back for that for your taxes to donate to you know, so it, it i think that's a, a good tax credit you know you know tax some people hate tax credits you know we pick and right. pick winners and losers but when you get into you know historic or entrepreneur entrepreneur or pan, food pantry tax credits stuff like that right i think that's a service that people want to donate to, you know, if they donate 50000 they get the tax credit back, and it helps the community as a whole instead of just paying for it. You know, we, the community gets gets part of and gets sure. gets contribute. You know, we see, we see a lot of that in, uh, like, the youth opportunity programs where they get the YOP tax credits to invest in things like our construction <laughs> trades building. You know, you yes. get your tax credits because it's going to help out. And, and I'll be honest with you. The future. You know, uh, if I would have been on my game, and, and I'm still learning, you know, it's, it's really difficult. I went to that meeting about when they trying to raise money for that. You know, if I would have known, I could ask for money for my food pantry. Mm -hmm. and, and I found out that the Texas County Food Pantry is getting funding, mm -hmm. right, from our budget. I mean, I, I, it's just such a massive process. And I'm learning, you know, by the time eight years is up, I, should, I hope to be very, very <laughs> fluent in doing things, right? If, if people want to keep me here, right? Yeah, right. If they sure. don't, they don't. Well, I mean, no, I have no fine. problem with that either. I mean, I, I want to, I'm here to support you, and I hope they support me. But um, You can't know everything when you walk in the door. But it's just so difficult because I want to make sure, like, like what I do with our, my commissioners, when I see a grant come through, I forward it to them, right? Mm -hmm. And say, I don't know if you apply or could you forward this to the people in your community. I mean, I, I, I tried to fix that. The first year, I tried to do it all. I sent it to every food pantry or whatever, right, or every fire department. Sure. So my, my goal is to make sure that our commissioners, and I've done that this past week. I sent several grant things to uh, uh, our presiding commissioner, current appointed presiding commissioner, Gary Larson, and Wes Mowbray, commissioner, about some grant funding that's coming out, this historic grant thing coming I says mm -hmm. you guys might want to share that with somebody in the community because I can't know every, like Cuba and I can't know all that right sure so I I hope I use them as a resource to help the community you know and hopefully we work together to get that done you know as we go forward 
Because they are doing that work on the courthouse now, and there's got to be a lot more work done. And I think too. some of that come from the ARPA money that they used, mm -hmm. and some of the different things that they sure. did. So, I mean, that is a good thing, you know. But that that that's something else. If there's a historic vehicle uh, building or something in town that we want to do, we that somebody's passionate about. I know when I worked Shannon County. Um, Greg Rowden, the Sinclair guy, right. they were trying to do a school down there. And I said, well, you know, is it historic? Yeah, so they may actually apply for a historic grant to help with that building. I mean, so, I mean, it's just right. since that, them kind of things. And that's the information I want to send to, right. to them. Well, we have William Lynch Elementary. That's an historic building. I mean, so, yeah. I mean, you so, know, so hopefully that's, maybe, just the, the, maybe the schools can take a look at that. And, yeah, and, so, yeah. And I mean, so we'll figure that out. Part. I'm very good. There's a house joint resolution out there. For the right to oh yeah that I I I'm just kind of uh -huh. that was <laughs> I, I was kind of taken back on that one as a, the right to hunt yeah I mean so they just want to send it to the people to say we have the right to hunt like I guess several years back they had a house joint resolution a right to farm you know mm -hmm. and that that came through the thing so I mean it's just saying that we have the right to hunt and they can't take it still gives regular conservation and it just gives rules and regulations on that it doesn't sure. say a free for all to hunt yeah. but they're just saying it's a constitutional right to do that so i mean uh hjrs are you know we put something in the constitution and it's kind of so okay so we have a couple house bills on there for uh, personal privacy yeah the, you know that's a big issue right now is your personal privacy and make sure that, you know you got all these agencies trying to protect your privacy if you pay a fee whatnot but they're just trying to make sure our state agencies don't release information on personal privacy there's still rules and regulations on that but they want to tighten that up so certain things aren't taken from i know one in judiciary they're trying to get case net uh, some information not to be put on case net on juveniles because you know they come back and haunt you oh yeah so we're always trying to keep the information out there right but we don't want to put too much i know that we heard a bill the other day about school boards uh, attorney general not attorney general um secretary of state has to have a list of school board members right right, right now but it only has school board members their tenure what school and when when they expire, right? Okay. That's it. it. It's not phone numbers, not nothing. No contact information. No. So so if you want R threes or R eighties school board members, you don't know who they are. So, oh, so and so is on there. So then you can find out and go farther, right? But they just think that's a a way to keep transparency, so people know, right? Because uh, most people, I, I'm not gonna, not saying bad, but I'd say how many people do you think know who the school board members on the, on our eighty are? I do. You do. <laughs> but if we want to take a yeah. microphone out in Salem well, and ask, know, I'm, and I'm not bashing on anybody. Well, they but might know two or three. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, yeah. But yeah. so this way, if they want to know who's on there, it's easy access. So that's yeah. – and then the others are just to protect issues, phone numbers and judiciary processes that they got because they're getting threats of judiciary for certain things. They're just trying to squeeze that in not to – not let the information out, but just to kind of protect it so it's not so easily – taken especially with facebook and how people do stuff on that you know years ago ryan uh, if anybody remembers when when the <coughs> first came on and highway patrol started posting incident reports crash reports. yes juveniles names were issued just like <laughs> yeah. anybody else yeah. three four five years old yeah they were put on there and even what happened to them so if somebody would have, you know, let's say, for example, there was a, a fatal accident for somebody three or four years old, somebody could get that information off that Highway Patrol report, could go look up all that information and actually change an identity yeah. based upon that, that crash report. So I think we're learning. Yeah, so they, they've, re, they've taken that out. You know, there's nothing, anything 16 and under, you're juvenile, male or female, and that's it. Yeah. So there's been, there's been repairs done to it, but... You know, it, it takes a while. We have to learn from our mistakes. It's always kind of been the way. Yeah. You know, let's talk a little bit about animal chiropractic. So everybody's sitting down on this one, right? Yeah. So this is <laughs> this is what we do in Jeff City. Yeah, so this okay. is one of the most important things we guys yeah, have been here today. Yeah, I'm, sure. uh, I'm being kind of sarcastic yeah, on this. I but. know you are. <laughs> Uh, but I guess there's a bill with uh, animal chiropractic, and I'm not bashing on chiropractors or anything, but they're going to allow vets and chiropractors to work on animals. I mean, I didn't know that was a thing, mm -hmm. but apparently, oh, you yeah. know, it is. And uh, um, it's just a bill, I guess, that had to be done to allow that to be done. I mean, so I... I this well, it, was is what you get done, into. it was being done anyway. Yeah, so now I don't know if it's 
paid or insurance pays it, but it's just given uh, some authority to do that. So, I mean, so if you look at all the subjects that we've talked about already, right, how broad it is from chiropractic right. to transgender to no. hospitals and all that stuff. It's just, it's very overwhelming. My, my own feeling is it's just that the state recognizes that animal chiropractic is a real thing. Oh, yes. I, I agree with that. I mean, you know, and I, and I think a lot of times, you know, for years ago, I'm talking a lot of years ago and even probably as late as the fifties and sixties, chiropractors were not considered a good medicine, you know, bad oh, mojo. And back in the twenties and thirties, if you went to a chiropractor, it's like going to a witch doctor, you know, it was kind of crazy. And times have changed. Oh, we, we, we all we all find out that there's different things that work. Chiropractic, if it works for humans, it's going to work for animals. So, yeah. you know, the thing is, though, if it's not recognized by the state, I doubt if anybody who has, uh, let's say, uh, insurance on a horse, you know, maybe it's a thoroughbred horse and they need to have an adjustment. They probably can't yeah. get it done. I'm with you. I could, just couldn't imagine trying to figure out how to do a horse. No, I couldn't either. I'm not, it's, 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 I'm not a, no, it, I'm it's, not a it, chiropractor. Either. Obviously, you know, it's a need. Otherwise, it wouldn't have come up to, up to Jeff City. And uh, like you said, it, it just... Um, authorize or recognize it as a as, as a legitimate issue that needs to be addressed so tell us a little bit about what's left in the session i know we, we have some time left in the session what what do you see moving forward from here uh a lot of a lot of, obviously a lot of conversations and yeah right and now and, and kind of maneuvering right right now what you have is not necessarily stalemate but the senate sending bills over we're sending to the house um, and now we're trying to figure out um, if the Senate's going to hear our bills and are we going to hear the Senate's bills. I mean, they're going through committees. Um, I think some of these other, other, I don't know how some of the important bills that are going to, like the transgender bill, the House has one, the Senate has one. I think that will pass, right? I don't know what form it's going to come out because the Senate bill has some, some different language in it. Some yeah. some people that's already transitioning, they're allowing that to happen, right? Mm -hmm. And they have a sunset in it, and, and and the house is like, well, why do we have a sunset in something when we feel it's your uh, it's wrong for the child? And that's where the so that's that's going to be a, a a discrepancy that we're going to have to decide on, right? Okay. Will it pass without that? I don't know. So, mm -hmm. uh, petition initiative is is another bill that. It's been held up on both sides. There's good petition initiative bills. If anybody knows what that is, it's it's, it's basically, I think it's given more, um, given the voters more power than what they got. Because right now you can, uh, like I said last time I was on a store on on the radio station, 13 counties in the state passed Amendment Three. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that's not. I don't feel that's a direct reflection of the whole state, population wise, numbers wise. Yes, you know they got more votes. But when you only have 13 out of 114 counties pass something, I don't think that's a reflection of the state. So the petition initiative uh, that's up there, there's several of them. The one that I, I, I like the most would be the congressional district one. Okay. Basically, the, either we got eight congressional districts, and five of the eight congressional districts would have to have 51% or more of the votes to pass. So even if you didn't have the majority of the votes, um, if you had five of the eight have 51 percent or more it would it would be a con con so that way it's fair you know for all, all the whole state to get a voice okay. and if we explain that and people have always complained about the electoral college in a federal election they said well that's not fair electoral college because the popular vote wanted this person elected but the electoral college they don't get elected because the electoral college doesn't allow that to happen because each state has so many votes that they get you know, so let's, for example, New York and California, you can get a third of, of all the votes you need to become president in two states. And they just they would just work them two states. And they, that's it. And then they, they would get that. And if they got Ohio, then they've got almost a half. Yeah. So if you just have to work six or seven states to get the votes you need to be president by popular vote, then that's all you're going to do. You're not going to represent the United States. You're going to represent the most populated areas. The Electoral College balances that out, so you have to win the different states uh, to get all the votes that you're going to need. Yes, those popular states, the most popular states that have the highest population are still going to get garner more attention because they're still going to get more Electoral College votes out of those states but you got to have those little two and three ones. You know, even the District of Columbia has two. 
Yes. You know, which is crazy because they're not that big. How they ever got two? I thought maybe one, but they have two electoral college votes. And, you know, and people don't even understand that you can go to electoral college and they don't even have to vote the way that the state has a majority. They can actually vote on their own. That's a little scary, too. Yeah. So they're supposed this, to, but that doesn't mean they by, will. By this petition initiative and, and that particular one, it just makes it to where the whole state, kind of like the Electoral College, but we don't, because also right now you just got to go to St. Louis, Kansas City, Columbia, and Springfield to get anything passed yeah. in our Constitution. And, you know, it shouldn't be easy to change. We should be able to change our Constitution if the people will it, right? I have no right. problem with that. But it shouldn't be just certain places in the state get to change it. But if you go to 80% of the other places in the state and they don't want it, the 20% is telling everybody in the 80 how we're going to do this? Yeah, well, what, it, I mean, the, that's, the, that's what it's saying. The U.S. Constitution takes, what, two-thirds? Oh, yeah. I mean, so it's 66% to pass to change the Constitution in the U.S., but ours is 51% mm -hmm. of the voters. I mean, we don't want to squash the voice of the people by any means, but it shouldn't be so easy for for the herb and the pop you know back when this was done the population wasn't so stressed in st louis kansas it was but not like it is now sure so we just our rural areas really need a petition initiative reform to give us us a voice back and that's i truly believe that so well, it's amazing when you take a look at that stuff and here's what we're seeing a lot of too um ron and, and, I, and I think that the legislature may need to look at this is a lot of the people that still want to vote in their old voting districts, say they lived in St. Louis, they're buying a house in Dent County to live in Dent County or Phelps County or Crawford County because they don't want to be out of the city, but they still want to vote in the city. So they're not registering when they go to the small community. They still keep their vote in St. Louis where they feel like they have a better, better voice. So, yeah. you know, <clears throat> I think something needs to be done about that because legally they're not living there six months. That's supposed to be their, their residence. Yeah, I guess that, that that's true. I mean, it's kind of like Florida, um, what they call them, uh, snowbirds or mm -hmm. something. You know, if you live in 51% of the time in one or the other, you have to designate where you're voting for. And I guess that's up to them to decide. And how does the state regulate that? You know, usually I would say wherever your driver's license is, is where you, sure. you know, your address on that is where you vote. I mean, so but we don't use our driver's license for that either. I well, but, so. but a lot of it is, and I know at one time when I did live in St. Louis and I moved down to Dent County, you don't go change your license right away. Yeah. And so you're not usually registered to vote. Your license says you're still living in St. Louis, but you're residing in Dent County. And if you go register to vote, you still have that license that says you're still in St. Louis because that doesn't, they don't jive. But by law, you're supposed to, oh, I know five by days, law. you're supposed to <laughs> notify the Department but, of Revenue. But you know move. as well as I do, you know, oh, yeah. if you move somewhere, you're kind of busy when you do move somewhere. Yeah, I know that. I got that. You're not going to get it done very quickly. And, you know, as I'm just saying, that I think that this, this can lead to some of these votes that are a little out of control in some of the major areas because there are a lot of people. And I think people see a lot of, of people moving in from out of state here in Dent County and also some of the other rural counties where they want to get away from all that crowding and things of that nature, but yet they don't register to vote in our counties. Yeah. But no, the end of session is coming up. You know, if you see something, I mean, I, I try to keep you informed of what's already been done. Mm -hmm. Hopefully in the future, I might be able to say, hey, this is coming. You know, keep an eye on this. But, you know, we, when there's 1,100, 1,200, 1,500 bills, um, usually I don't focus on them until they come in the committee or come to the floor. Right. I mean, because I get texts about bills that haven't even been referred yet. Yeah. I mean, so, and it's nothing against that. They're worried about them. But I, I, I have no problem with somebody emailing my office about what their process is and how that is. And I try to get back with them if they need it. Um, but I, if I don't know your thought processes, I, I can't, you know, I can't put that in my, my decision-making part. So. Well, while we have, we have a bag here on, and I'm going to reach for this. I'm going to show it right here. We have been giving away these on our, on our streaming games that we've done for Salem Tiger Sports. And this is a, a real nice bag. And I'm going to hold it up here and I'll let the people get a chance to see this. This holds a stadium blanket that you've been very, very kind to allow us to give away at some of our games. And uh, this is a fantastic blanket. Now, I have just have the, the nice little tie bag here. Yeah. I'm not going to pull the whole blanket right. out and show it. But I, I, people can still register to win these in our streaming games that we do carry. 
on KSMO Media, on our KSMORadio.com, KSMO Stream Facebook, or KSMO YouTube pages. And they can register on the radio, too. We'll give people a keyword. They send the keyword in. There's a form on our website at KSMORadio.com. Just go see this insignia, and when you see that, you just go click on the face of the tiger, and it takes you right to the form. And then they can just put their name away that we can contact them, and then the key phrase or word of the day. And uh, we've had some some fun, easy ones, but we had some fun ones too. Uh, that people just have to fill that word in, and they qualify for the bag. And uh, four of them have been given away so far. I think we have. Well, I think five of them have been given away so far. I think we have three left to go. Well, I I think that uh, I'm I'm glad to be able to give back. I think that, you know, I appreciate all the support I've gotten monetarily and whatnot and. How I try to figure out how I can give back to the community, right? And this is mm -hmm. a way I can give something back to the community that you know that you've given to me, and I can give back. And um, I saw them, and I liked them, and yeah. I think they're wonderful. I need to register to win myself, I guess, one of these <laughs> days, <laughs> or I just need well, to buy my own somewhere well, along the line. Now, coming up in May, we have a game against Cuba, and we'll actually be giving a bag away for each. Yep, and I have bags for Cuba. I just got bags for. Uh, I bought some for bourbon, and I got some for Steelville that I'll be getting with them, too. So I've talked to some uh, boosters in Cuba. They're, they're working with me on that. Um, uh, Steelville, I'm still working with them. I, and uh, bourbon, uh, the bourbon economic development team, I'm going to let them give them away for, you know, gifts and in the community. It's just for me a way to give back, you know, and let you guys know that I, I appreciate what you guys do and, you know, I, you, I I want to give back. I mean, well, so how do I do that? You yeah, know? well, it's great. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. If you still have bags like next year when we play basketball against Steelville or yep. whatever, because we don't play football against Steelville yeah. uh, or Cuba, but uh, we do, and we're bourbon, to say, to say the least. But we do play basketball, and if we do, we can still do these even during yep. basketball season when we're video streaming those games. But do you know people take advantage of this? Uh, these bags are really nice. They're nice and insulated, and they're water-resistant. And I say weather-resistant more than just water. If you get snowed on. They're good, too. Yeah. Um, but they're very comfortable, and they're great for a picnic. You just lay down on them and just have a, a real nice uh, stadium blanket, and it doesn't cost you a thing except to, to be watching Salem Tigers or the Salem Tigers and Cuba Wildcats when that game comes together. So if uh, you're watching this and you're from Cuba, you'll get a chance to sign up for that on that day when Salem plays Cuba. I believe it's May 3rd, but don't quote me on that gotcha. one. Okay, but we appreciate that. Well, Ryan, I want to thank you. Any final words for no, our I'm little get-together today? I'm, I'm just honored to be your rep. And, you know, like I said, I can't. if I don't know, I can't help, you know, and I try to get out as much as I can and visit different areas, and we're blessed to have a, a great community and, you know, love your sport and try to keep you informed. If you have questions, please ask. I mean, I want to know if you don't if you don't ask, I can't. You you don't know the answer, and if you hear a rumor, um, have, don't hesitate to contact me to to clarify that up because that's first thing I don't want rumors to go down that grapevine, and you know. You want to give those numbers out in your email as well? Yeah, my email at the house is house. Oh, sorry, it's Ron dot Copeland at house dot mo dot gov. That's on my web page, and and you can go to house dot mo dot gov as well, and that's. That'll go straight to the web house mm -hmm. webpage, and you can find my name and click on that. And all the bills that we've talked about would be there, and you can go through there and, and, and look at them as well. Um, my phone number at the office is 573-751-1688. And you know, my Facebook page is State Representative Ron Copeland. Um, you can follow and share on that and, uh, you know, send me a message on Messenger and whatnot like that, and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. I mean, well, I'll try to do that as much as I can. Always a pleasure to have you in town, sir, yeah. and have a chance to sit down with you and kind of get that firsthand information. It's yeah. not always easy to get that information. Well, I, mean, I, I just want to give it out, and uh, if you like it or dislike it, at least you have it. Uh, there you go. So, Appreciate well, thank that. Thank you very much. Well, Ron, thank you very much, and we hope everybody joins us next time we get together with Representative Ron Copeland on KSMO Media. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you.